Hey guys, I want to react to this thing. It's a trailer for a game called Ayudin Chronicle. Yes, it is Chronicle and not Chronicles. Have to check and confirm that I was saying the name right. Uh, it came out during E3. But I, first, I want to talk about E3 for just a second. Uh, E3 is uh, hot garbage. It's, it's not good. It's been declining for years. And I would assert, having been to at least six, probably eight, I'm probably underestimating it, uh, having been to many E3s, uh, the E3 was always garbage. It was, it's always been bad. Uh, this time, obviously, they're doing these online conferences, and no one gives a shit about E3 anymore, because uh, they just release your information kind of whenever. And... Nothing I saw was very exciting, except this, uh, but I already knew that this was going to come out. Just, there's a trailer now. Um, Starfield looks kind of interesting. I'm going to look at that next. Uh, Square Enix, <laughs> their conference was such a disappointment. Everyone's laughing at it on the internet. Uh, but going back to what I was saying before, which is the more controversial point, that E3's always been bad. It's, uh, here's the thing about E3 and like going to E3. It's like you wait in line for like four hours to see footage from a game or play a few minutes of a game and all of that footage is available online like the next day anyway. There's like sort of an experience element because you see all these booths and stuff. But after you've been to one E3, you start realizing that they just dig out the same booths that they use for every E3 over and over again. E3 didn't change much from year to year. It's like the same booths, the same construction, just the game trailers, what's playing on the screens is different. And you can get what's playing on the screens by just you know looking at your phone. So E3 is just crowds and lines and horrible like movie theater nachos that cost like $30. Like it's not good, it's never been good. And I'm not saying that like, uh, I don't enjoy conventions, because I've been to a lot of conventions that I have enjoyed. Uh, games conventions in specific, have you ever been to Gamescom in Germany? Gamescom in Germany, okay, E3 has like th two or three different showrooms. I'm, it's really two, but there's three if you kind of count the stuff off to the side. Um, Gamescom has triple that, it's got like 13 plus showrooms of equal size. It's got food vendors, it's got food trucks. I mean, E3 has food trucks now too, but like just the, the sheer quality of it is so much better. And they don't really make games in America that much. So you get these international companies who are trying to stretch their release announcements across all of these different shows that are happening internationally and there's just spread kind of thin. Uh, but like, most countries in the world that actually develop games have art subsidies for game development. So in Canada, they get a government subsidy for developing games. Uh, same thing in Europe and many European countries. You can apply for like government grants, government subsidies, etc. And uh, just the United States doesn't really support that. It's kind of the same thing for movies. We have a lot of publishers. We have a lot of money. We have a lot of controlling interests. We do have development houses. Uh, but most of them have pulled out of E3. So, uh, I don't know. E3, it was fun to go to when I was like 19 for the experience. But as I was required to go to it for work, like over the years, it just became this like droll chore. Like, it's just this, this constant nightmare. It's the same every year and it's never fun. It's never good. Um, okay, that's my weird rant about E3. Let's look at this trailer. I even Chronicle. I'm so hyped for this game. If you don't know what this game is, it's one of those things where um, Konami used to make this uh, JRPG franchise called Suikoden, and uh, they've discontinued the brand, uh, but the developers of that game have decided to go independent. They created a Kickstarter. It's the spiritual successor to Suikoden. It's like another Suikoden name, or another Suikoden game in everything but name. Um, so kind of like Bloodstained Ritual of the Night as compared to uh, Castlevania, except for the JRPG franchise Suikoden. And it's returning to its roots. Suikoden kind of went off the rails when it started going 3D. Um, kind of returning to its roots. Beautiful 2D animation. Looks amazing. Looks fantastic. Uh, Alright, let's, let's take a look. Phew. 
Xbox. Alright, so if you don't know, one of the core uh, features of the Suikoden series is you recruit like tons of characters. You recruit 108 different characters in every game because it's based on this famous Chinese novel called Legends of the Water Margin. It's about recruiting 108 revolutionaries to overthrow government. Um, yeah, and so, so you do that. So it's called Ayuden Chronicle the Hundred Heroes. So in this game, there you have to recruit 100 characters. So there's a big uh, emphasis on all these different characters that you can recruit into your team. Usually there's some town building, and I, I think they're releasing something called uh, Ayuden Chronicle Rising, which is just going to be the town building component to it, uh, as, as like a kind of a, I don't know what you call it, like, like a, a moose bouche <laughs> God, that was pretentious. Sorry. Uh, all right, back to the trailer. I'm digging these character designs. I think they look really good. And it's like, it's so sweet in. It's so sweet in. Alright, so one of the things I like about this is... <laughs> it's okay. Let me, let me, let me uh, uh, get my thoughts together a little bit. Okay, first of all, it looks like there's a lot of influence from Suikoden 1 in terms of the art style. It just it has a lot more of a Suikoden 1 kind of vibe to me. Uh, but it also looks like it's taking influence from kind of these modern JRPG, like retro JRPG... I, I was going to say like up updates, but just this like new style of like like Octopath Traveler, where it's like a retro JRPG, but it's modernized, but it's not, it's modernized in a retro upgrade kind of a way, uh, which I really like, and it makes kind of the backgrounds pop. Uh, I think it looks really good. You've got the 2D and the 3D uh, backgrounds. You've got the 2D sprites and the 3D backgrounds. I think that art style uh, looks really, really good. Um, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. I also like the design of this main character. He, again, reminds me of McDole from uh, Suikoden 1. And I don't think they've shown it yet, but he's got the, uh, the Chinese, like, the Chinese, like, curved sword thingies. If you know what those are called, tell me in the comments below. I've been trying to figure that out today. Um, looks really good. I like the character designs. I like the art style. And I really like that it's kind of a return to form for... Suikoden, I would almost say, even though Suikoden 3, the actual Suikoden 3, was a pretty good game, I would say I would almost consider this to be more like what I would have expected from Suikoden 3 all the way back in the day. So it feels like, to me, like Suikoden 3 is like finally releasing. One of the things about the Suikoden series that really makes it stand out, and it's, everyone praises Suikoden for its story, especially Suikoden 2, and I think one of the reasons for that is they put an incredible amount of attention to detail into the dramatic animations for scenes for the sprites, and a lot of games don't do that. They put a lot of effort into combat animations or other gameplay animations, uh, and not so much effort into animations that take place during scenes. They try to make do with what already exists based on the combat animations. Uh, but in Suikoden 2 or the other Suikodens, the portraits change, the emotions of the portraits and dialogue change, the actual acting from the sprites is really good, and then they have the emotive kind of um, anime style over the head icons, like an exclamation point will appear, or like that little angry symbol, you know what I mean? It looks, it looks like that. Um, and I just, I wanna point out, you know, this, this girl runs up, she looks like Nanami from Sweden too, and she's got like the cartoon like leg spinning thing. It's, so I, I feel like they're carrying that attention to detail with the sprite animations into this uh, new iteration here. I also, sorry, I want to get to the combat footage, but I also, I want to mention that, uh, 
I love this. I love when these older JRPGs are really expressive with the dialogue because uh, written, purely written dialogue like this can be kind of dry. Uh, but in some older JRPGs, they will do you know this this kind of capitalization thing that's you know adds expressiveness to it. That's one thing. Uh, but for instance, in Breath of Fire 3, they'll add different colors to it, they'll add text animations, the text will shake or explode to, to simulate, uh, you know, emotion or, or various circumstances. Um, I think that adds a lot to the story of the game. Uh, if we're, if we're going to analyze for a moment why a game like Suikoden 2 is so well praised for its story, it's not just because of the surface level writing. These other things also go into it, the way the music impacts the scenes, the way the dialogue is written and executed in the narrative design of how that dialogue is presented, uh, the animations, as I mentioned earlier, the emotional expressiveness of the characters, all this kind of stuff. I love these, I like these settings a lot. So I love this. This feels like, you know, Suikoden combat, like the 2D Suikoden combat's like taken to the next level. It's got this like really cool cinematic camera. Um, it looks amazing to me. This whole game looks amazing to me. I'm so hyped for this game. I'm not hyped for like almost any game. I'm usually not a person who gets hyped about things. I don't really care. I don't like things that much. My baseline level of like caring about things is pretty, I don't know, below average. But this game, I'm going to get this. I, I supported the Kickstarter. I'm going to get it on day one. I love this franchise. I think this game looks amazing. And uh, I think the risk of me being disappointed by this is extraordinarily low based on the track record of the developers of this franchise. Um, so while they're trying to push like, uh, whatever, the Marvel's Guardian of the Galaxy cookie cutter freaking action FPS fucking same reskin game fucking that comes out every year, I don't know. I don't give a shit. But this game, oh man, oh, I'm digging this, I'm loving this. In fact, you know, let's, let's take a look at this trailer again and just, uh, just take a, a nice, healthy look at it. 505 Games is quickly making a name for itself with me. Um, they're a big publisher for, they're a little bit, they're like west of Thousand Oaks in LA. I, I know that because I used to work around there. Um, but they're, they're a pretty big publisher for a lot of the indie games that we see. Uh, so they do a really good job. I think THQ Nordic also does a pretty good job, although Biomutant was terrible. Um, but they do a really good job of finding kind of these diamonds from what they call like the uh, the triple I, like the, just the really good indie games uh, that are, you know, being funded on Kickstarter or in some other places that are, uh, uh, you know, not as well known. Um, they do a lot of good pickups. So 505 Games, I have positive feelings toward as a publisher. Yeah, see what I'm talking about? He's got like the Chinese like hook sword things. What are those called? I like these designs, man. I really like these designs a lot. I think I might like these designs even better than the later Suikoden games. Definitely better than Suikoden 1. Maybe not as good as Suikoden 2, but maybe they'll grow on me. Uh, but definitely better than the later Suikoden's. And this, this logo here is like very classic Suikoden style logo. Ah, okay, I'm gushing about this. I've gushed about this game enough. I'm excited about it. I'm super hype. Uh, this is probably my favorite thing that I saw 
during these uh, trailers from yesterday and the other day. And uh, yeah, I hope other people, especially JRPG fans, are as excited about this as I am. If not, I don't care. I'm going to play it. I'm going to have a fantastic time. I'm going to enjoy the hell out of it. All right, cheers.